Hey everyone, my name is Judy from Happy Holistics and since this coming Saturday is Earth Day, I thought I would share some tips with you on how we can all do our parts to help save the environment. Because part of being holistic is giving up crap about the Earth. So today I'm going to be sharing with you some tips on how to conserve water because I'm kind of awesome at it. Keep track of your water usage. It'll shed a light on how much your family is actually using. I do this through My Water Toronto and most likely whoever you're paying your water bills to will have that usage information available to you. The average Toronto household uses about 765 liters per day and according to My Water Toronto, my family of three uses 0.14 cubic meters which is equal to 140 liters per day. Americans apparently use about 1,514 liters daily. By knowing how much water you currently use, you can keep track of progress and maybe even identify where most of your water is going. So for example, I know I did laundry on April 15th so I'm not surprised that usage was higher on that day. Obviously, I can't avoid doing laundry altogether, but I can make sure that it's a full load every time I turn on the washer, rather than just having a few items in there. Save your water from going down the drain and use it again. Especially if you're a visual person, this can be another way of tracking your water because you visually see how much is coming out of the tap and going down the drain. We keep large mixing bowls at every sink and find at least one other use for that water. So for example, if you're rinsing apples and oranges, produce that grows from trees isn't dirty dirty and you can technically use that water again to rinse other fruits and vegetables. If it's something that grows from the ground like cilantro or potato, it does make your water a little bit murkier, but what we do is that we can water the grass with it or we can water flowers with it. Or because my family is so extra, first we would use the running water to do tree fruits like apples and oranges. Once we've collected that in a mixing bowl, we would use that same water to wash our potatoes. Now that the water is a little bit murkier, we can take it outside and use it in the garden. To do dishes, I have my hot soapy water on one side and for the second sink, I actually plug it up in order to save all the rinse water. Since it has traces of dish detergent in it, you do not want to be using that for consumables, but you can reserve that water in order to soak future dirty dishes or you can transfer it into a bucket and use it to flush the toilet. Number four, use a smaller stream in order to rinse stuff. So even your hands or dishes, you don't have to have it on full blast in order to do a thorough job. According to Huffington Post, the average shower uses about five gallons of water per minute. And for each bath, it takes about 36 gallons to fill a tub. So keep every shower under seven minutes and you're saving water already. Pair that up with using a smaller stream, turning off the water whenever you're lathering, shampooing, conditioning, and whatever the hell else you're doing in the shower, and you'd be saving so much water in no time. As you're waiting for the water to warm up, for your shower, save everything that comes out in a bucket or a basin. My aunt was completely blown away by how much water came out as she waited for the water to reach a comfortable temperature. Turn off the running water as you are brushing your teeth. This always seemed like such an obvious habit to me, but I've actually witnessed it in public, women brushing their teeth with a tap going full on. This wastes about six liters of water per minute. You're supposed to brush for two minutes twice a day. So that's about 24 liters of wasted water every single day. So stop running the water when you're brushing at home just to save yourself some money. Stop doing it in public because there are people in this world who do not have access to safe drinking water. Get a rain barrel and collect rainwater if you have the space for it. You can use that water for your lawn or for flowers. I would avoid using it on edibles because it might contain contaminants from your roof or wherever else it's running from and along the way it might collect bird poop or bugs or bug eggs so you do not want to use that on your food. On your lawn, go for it. Check out the water wastage that comes from filtration systems before investing in one. So for example, reverse osmosis water is notorious for its wastewater. At best, it produces one gallon of drinking water to one gallon of wastewater. At worst, I've seen up to seven gallons of wastewater to one gallon of drinking water. That's insane. Find a better or more efficient filtration system. If you are boiling your vegetables, consume that water for all of its nutrients or save that water to reuse in other dishes. For example, you can reuse that in soups as a base or you can boil your pasta in it. 
Those are all the tips that I have for you today. If you found any one of them helpful, please remember to subscribe to my channel by hitting that red button down below and like this video. I'll see you next week.